In this video, we're gonna talk about how to simplify when you have a negative exponent. We're gonna go through five examples together and I'm gonna show you how to simplify these. So our first example, we've got two thirds to the negative two power. So sometimes when people see this negative, they think, oh, that means that the number's negative. Well, that's not true if it's an exponent. They also sometimes uh, you know, look at this as like a minus sign of some sort. But what you want to think of when you have a negative exponent is that this negative is actually telling you to take the reciprocal of the base. What do we mean by the reciprocal? It means that we flip it over. So we can write this as three over two to the positive two power. Now when you take a fraction to a power, what you do is you raise that power uh, to the numerator of the denominator. You apply it to the top and the bottom. So this is really like three squared over two squared. Three squared is three times three, nine. Two squared is two times two, four. So we could leave it as an improper fraction, nine fourths. So just remember, when you see that negative exponent, look at the base. Remember, you've got the exponent, the base is you know, what the quantity is raised to. You've got the, the bottom value, right? Raised to that negative exponent. You take the reciprocal, right? So let's look at number two now. We've got four to the negative third power. Now you might say, Mario, this one, there is no uh, fraction involved. Well, remember, Everything can be written as a fraction by putting it over one. So we could think of this as four over one, that's still equal to four to the negative third power. Now when we see that negative, we say, oh, the negative tells us to take the reciprocal of the base, so we're gonna flip that over, so one over four to the positive three power. Then you can apply that to the numerator and the denominator, so one cubed is one times one times one, four cubed is four times four times four, which is 64, and you've got it. Now another way to do this problem is you could just say, well, four cubed is 64, because four times four times four, and then the negative tells us to take the reciprocal of 64, which is one over 64. That's a little bit quicker. Let's look at number three now. This one's a little bit different. We've got three x to the negative four. Now notice there's not any parentheses here. So this negative four is really just applying to the x, it's not to the three, okay? So that's important. Now. When you have a negative exponent, another way to look at it is, we know it tells us to take the reciprocal, but you can think of this as moving that quantity to the other side of the fraction bar. So if it's in the denominator, you move it to the numerator. If it's in the numerator, you move it to the denominator. That's the same thing as taking the reciprocal. This three will still stay up here in the numerator. It's just this x to the fourth that's gonna to move to the denominator. It's gonna switch from negative to positive. So whenever you switch sides, that exponent sign will change to the opposite. Let's look at number four. Now this one's a little bit different because we have the quantity five y to the negative two. So what we could do here, we can think of this as five y, okay, to the negative two all divided by one. And I, when I see that negative exponent, it tells me, let me move that quantity to the other side of the fraction bar and make it this a positive exponent. So this is gonna be five y to the positive two now. Now there's nothing left up in the numerator, so that's understood to be one. And now what we can do is we can say five squared and y squared. Five squared is 25 and y squared. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is you could just say this is five squared and y squared, which is 25 y squared. And then the negative, we could flip it at the end and we'll still get one over 25 y squared. Remember, when you do these problems, you always wanna have a positive exponent in your final answer. You don't wanna have negative exponents. That's considered improper. So last example, see if you can try this one. We've got two divided by x to the negative seven. Now notice this quantity is in the denominator. We can move it to the other side of the fraction bar, change this from a negative seven to a positive seven. Because remember, that negative tells us to take the reciprocal. So this is gonna be two times x to the seventh over one, but anything divided by one is itself. Now you might be saying, Mario, I learned it a little different way, right? So if you look at this, let's go over here. We've got two over x to the negative seven. Some people will do it like this. They'll say, hmm, x to the negative seven, that's really like one over x to the positive seven. But then what we have is a complex fraction. We have a fraction inside of a larger fraction. When we divide by a fraction, it's really like multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of this, I'm just flipping it over. And now when I multiply, you can see we're getting that same result of 2x to the seventh. But this is a little bit of a shortcut. When you see the negative exponent, move that quantity to the other side of the fraction bar. If it's in the denominator, move it to the numerator. If it's in the numerator, move it to the denominator. So great job if you were able to follow these examples. I'll put another video right there where we can talk more about how to work with exponents, and I'll see you over in that video.